You're listening to Not So Live from Asteroid G. I'm Mike Finkelstein. With me, as always, is... Josh Schaefer. <laughs> not not going to give us a weird... Like, I was thinking about doing Captain, but that's too broad. That is. That is way too broad. I, I don't Human even know... slave Josh Schaefer. <laughs> <laughs> you, I, honestly, if you're going to play the proper human in this, you'd just be silent the whole time. Like that, see? <laughs> and Queen Bee. Hey. So we are talking, if you hadn't already figured it out, which you might not have, about Roots. What? No, Planet of the Apes. <laughs> Thank you for making this podcast awful once again, Josh. Today we are talking about, if you couldn't tell already, Planet of the Apes which we just recently watched through and did for the website. And I feel like it's a good time as any to, to actually go through and talk about all of these movies. So, apes. Yes. Yes. Thoughts. They're pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> just going to make ape noises the whole podcast. <laughs> I mean, if we could do <laughs> Ow. That was a good one. I liked that was, it. That was really good. I, mean, I feel like we actually really mostly just need to speak in sign language and occasionally go, <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> Caesar is home. <laughs> Caesar is salad. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Caesar. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that's what happened when they killed the emperor? They were all standing over going, man, I really feel like a salad now. Right? <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Caesar's starting to smell good. Ew. <laughs> Ew. Ew. You had to shave him first. <laughs> <laughs> so... And we're off track. <laughs> we were off track almost from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what are people's thoughts on the Planet of the Apes movies? So, I mean, we'll obviously go through and single out certain portions of it, but give me your thoughts. Uh, good, then okay, then bad, then good again. <laughs> now, the bad, we're all talking about... Tim Burton. Tim yes. Burton's... Oh, God, okay. fuck Tim Burton. <laughs> Wal- <laughs> Wahlberger... Uh, extravaganza. Extravaganza, okay. <laughs> I, actually, I think the best actor in that movie was the monkey. Tim so. Roth? Oh, yeah. Oh, Tim <laughs> Roth. No, 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 the monkey. There was a monkey? Yeah, the monkey and the spaceship. Oh, yes. I forgot all about him. His performance was so on It point. was amazing. I, yeah. <laughs> He's really... And Tim Roth was really good. Yeah, Tim Roth. Tim Roth's good in everything. Generally. And Mark Wahlberg was And terrible. going forward, we will refer to Tim Roth as the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tim Roth. It's, it's, go- it's going to be interesting when we talk about Pulp Fiction. <laughs> Oh, and the monkey. Oh, oh, the monkey. Yeah, no, he was great in that restaurant scene. <laughs> That's called callback humor. <laughs> Only true fans will get that reference. <laughs> like you trying to make a Tom Cruise reference in every podcast so yeah. far. <laughs> I think I have one lined up for today. <laughs> Has he not been in a movie with a with any kind of monkey or ape? I was about to say Project X, but that was Matthew yeah. Broderick. Yeah, that was Matthew Broderick. Um, Back when those two were actually almost interchangeable for a very short period of time, and then no, no monkeys in any of the Mission Impossible's. I mean, I don't remember. Aside from Tom Cruise, <laughs> mm, there was that scene in Jerry Maguire where the kid talked about a monkey, I think, or a zoo or something. Okay, well, that's that's close. That's close. That's close. We'll have to see. The, the kid was basically a monkey. I mean, his performance <laughs> was kind of anyway. <laughs> it was it was a Mark Wahlberg level performance. Mm. Now, I am not, uh, unlike my family, I am not a big fan of the original Planet of the Eight films. And I, okay. did, and I did tell you that I kind of liked Tim Burton's Planet of the Eight, <sighs> but, but not, not because of Wahlberg, but probably because of Tim Roth. <laughs> yeah, well, Tim Roth, yes. Helen the Bottom Carter was okay. She was okay. Wait, she was in... Yeah. Yeah, she played she the... She was one of the monkeys. I don't understand. That doesn't track with Tim Burton at all. <laughs> He, well, I was just wondering where Johnny anything. Depp was yeah. in this in this whole film. Well, I, Did I, he have a hat? I was going to say, I have a feeling the Tim Roth character was probably written for Johnny Depp, and then Johnny Depp couldn't do it or didn't want to, and Tim Roth came in and did it instead. I can see that. Yeah. yeah. Maybe he was doing the uh, uh, pirate movies at the time. Honestly, that probably did come out around the same time. Yeah, so, yeah. I think that's probably why. I'd be, that would be the thing. And his performance was much better put into it. Well, if, then yeah. if that's the case, then uh, they probably didn't want to use Johnny Depp for it because he wasn't yet the block, box office draw that he was right. afterwards. Mm-hmm. So, But yes, Tim Roth. Tim Roth is probably the best part of that movie. Um, Wahlberger, Marky Mark is probably the worst part of that movie. <laughs> I think the direction was worse. Direction was well, direction was listless. The story was listless. The monkey effects, the makeup were actually pretty good. Yeah, 
And I like the fact that they had a diverse number of apes over just like chimps and gorillas and yeah. orangs. But wow, nothing about that movie worked. No. Mm. No. no. And it's so, terrible. But you like them, that one, it, better. Better than the original ones, but then because I've never been able to get into the original ones. It's kind of I, how I liked him as a kid. Josh feels about Doctor Who. Just yeah. didn't get into it. Mm. I mean, that's tragic. But unlike you guys, I'm sympathetic. <laughs> To Tim Burton? No. Oh. oh, you're just saying that you're a nice person and we're not. Yes. Yeah, I can see that. That tracks. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you mm-hmm. with the, Josh, with yes. the human slave, what do you feel <laughs> about the classic Five Apes there, movies? I mean, it's, I feel the, like most movies from the 70s, they have their moments where you have to be on hallucinogenics to understand what's going on. The second movie. Especially the second movie. Oh my god, Beneath the Planet of the Apes is mm-hmm. so trash. And by, But if I was stoned, it probably would be amazing. Exactly. Like, you take you take some LSD before they get to the point where they're, like, doing the, like, the... Trying to get into the outward zone, and there's the weird flame walls yeah. and the dead corpses that all just kind of move around. And you're like, what the hell is going on here? It would probably make a lot more sense if you were on yeah. mushrooms or something. Yeah. Yeah. Because by... They, they do have their tedious points where it's just like, all right, can someone do something aside from staying in the cell? That'd be great. I think if it wasn't for the twist ending of the first movie and then, like, just the crowd-pleasing nature of the third movie, Escape, mm-hmm. no one would talk about these movies anymore. No. Because even the only the fifth, even the first one on its own, I think would have only been a like a footnote if the third movie hadn't been just as good, if not better. Yeah, but... Because yeah, the- no one would care. I think that the end, the twist ending of the first one would still hold a good place in history or cinema history, but like the only other memories, like I haven't watched the original Plane of the Apes for a while, so I had the, you know, damn dirty apes. Yeah. What they head. reuse in every other ape reboot. Yeah. In one yeah. way or form. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Get your stinking hands off me, you damn dirty human. Yep. God, I fucking hate Timber yeah. for that. It was <laughs> 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 My, my mouth tastes like pennies now. Thank you. <laughs> Just the bile I feel every time I think about Tim Burton's movie. But oh, and then the open. We mouth can talk kiss. about the new three movies. Yeah. Well, we though. I like those. I like those. That's the only good. Well, and then of course no one talks about the two TV shows because those were. I've right never good. seen the new. The I know that they exist. I know you have them. I do, but. and I've tried to get through both of them. I sat down for the reviews, and I watched through an episode and a half of the live-action one. And it was just like a really boring Star Trek. Like, a like, and don't get me wrong, I'm not a huge fan of the original series of Star Trek, because at times yeah. it can get pretty tedious. Oh, for sure. This was, like, more tedious than some of the worst episodes of the original series of Star oh, Trek. Wow. Yeah, it was, it was just really long and boring boring and went nowhere well i'm glad that you suffered for this podcast (laughs) and then the cartoon series was hideously tedious i remember watching that one and like they spent 20 minutes walking across the desert and by the end of the episode they (laughs) still hadn't made it to the end of the desert and then i'm just listening about it i know i'm like i I, what am i watching easiest animation ever (laughs) it was it was like sub he-man sub hanna barbera levels and they just like reused stills and like characters just like walked Neat. oh my god so the new movies the the trilogy that may or may not remain a trilogy andy circus is amazing mm-hmm. yes yes Golluming it up in there yep yeah just just doing his best as caesar yep Cesar. john lithgow was amazing yeah. james Loved franco him. James Franco was there. James mm-hmm. Franco was there. Um, <laughs> it's it, and I think one of the most overtly terrible jobs of casting someone to play a scientist since they got that chick to play Christmas whatever in the James Bond. Oh, movie. I forget about that. January <laughs> Jones was that? No, that it was one? um the chick from like Wild Things who was married to Charlie Sheen for oh, a while, whatever her name was. Yeah, um, do you know her name? Because you're you're laughing really hard. <laughs> I mean, January Jones is a terrible actress, too, but I don't uh, think she's been Denise, in a James Bond. Denise, Denise Richards. Yeah, Richards. Denise Richards. Yes. There you go. Thank you. You had You're to welcome. cue that one up for me. And January Jones was in Last Man on Earth, I believe, and that show was phenomenal. That show might be phenomenal. She's still a shitty actress. <laughs> 
I mean, I didn't care about her at all on Mad Men, which might have been part of her character, but she could have found some pathos for her character. And I didn't care about her as uh, White Queen in the X Men movies that I'm sure we'll get to talking about. Wasn't January Jones in The Help? Yeah. The what? I think she was in The Help. Yeah, Yeah, she was pretty good in The Help. I didn't watch that movie. Okay. I don't need to see white people save black people. No, like it, was, movie. it was it, black it's, people pooping on white it's, people. It's it's more awesome. like it's, it's a, black people getting their, you know. Yeah. I don't know. Everything from the trailers just made it look like white savior syndrome, and I just I nope. didn't have it. No, any. it's more about uh, getting education on how it was and how some people came to understand, oh, we're wrong. Yeah. Man. The white people came to I already know white people are wrong. I don't, I don't need to see a movie about it. They're already wrong. <laughs> I, I live it every day. <laughs> yeah, you You're whitey. You're so wrong. <laughs> My privilege, oh, I guess. Talk, well, oh, I mean, I'm talking about white privilege. Planet of the Apes. Okay, so second movie. <laughs> second movie. Why? Privilege. What's? Who, who's the curly-haired girl that everybody loves? I can't stand her, but she was in like a '90s TV show. And Felicity. She, yes. <laughs> why is she so popular? I can't I stand her as an actress. She's terrible. I mean, she was good in The Americans. I mean, she was like the wife of the main character on yes. the human side in Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. She was in The Americans, and she's really good there. But what she does there is basically play an emotionless husk. That was raised in Russia, as I assume all emotionless husks are. Um, mm-hmm. And then, like, becomes a killer for the state. And it then secretly is a spy in America. There's the whole plot of the movie. I, or series. I hope you guys were... <laughs> Sorry. Uh, spoilers. Well, no. That's, that's, the that's established episode. the first episode. Yeah. <laughs> but that, that one, I think, suits her range, which is stilted and kind of... I don't think hollow. her name's Felicity. No, but that's the character played she plays. Felicity, yeah. And okay. I always just think of her as Felicity. I mean, she was in a Mission Impossible, and she was terrible in that. Yeah, but she dies early. Yeah, I, I was really happy Spoiler. about that part. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler for something that happens in the first 10 minutes of the movie. Don't care for something. And it was also, it's like 15 years old at this point, so that's whatever. True. So if you haven't watched it, that's really on you. <laughs> but yeah, no, I don't like Carrie. Tom Cruise was in Mission Impossible. Yes. We got there. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> this this isn't six ways to Tom Cruise get get Tom Cruise to a six monkey. Six degrees of Tom and Cruise. Bacon. Tom Cruise will be on this podcast one day, and he'll be like, "Please stop calling me." <laughs> I'm not calling him. We're just talking about him until he googles himself, and he's like, "Hey, these guys are almost kind of funny." <laughs> Almost and kind of. That's that's that should be the name of our podcast. Almost kind of funny with Asteroid G. <laughs> We're almost kind of. And they'll come in and we'll be like, "Hey, man, why don't you teach me to run real fast?" Um, the, he runs really well. Tom Cruise. He does. He's a great runner. He's a great runner. Almost as good as um Chris Evans. Yeah. Oh, Chris yeah. Evans is a fantastic runner on screen because they did they did a study where it's like he keeps his body like in a per- per- perfect like ballet position, so nice. it looks very theatrical when he runs. So but, but, it has nothing to do with anything we were talking about for Planet of the Apes, but we're on the topic of it now. There's so. running in Planet of the Apes. There is. From yeah. monkeys and monkeys running from humans? Apes. Not monkeys. Apes. Uh, they, they get very upset in the movie when you say that they're monkeys. They don't like that. I'm not a monkey sympathizer. Ooh, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> 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 So yeah, no, but I don't like her. But that she's a, a minimal part of that second movie. She is. And who's the guy who plays her husband? He was the guy who played John Connor in that awful Genesis yeah, movie. Yeah, he's terrible Oof. too. Yeah, he's not great. Kid was good. Kid and was I good. I think the kid went on to do some other things. Kid was, was only in like good. three scenes though. Yeah. yeah, but that's one of my favorite scenes is mm-hmm. the kid with the orangutan. Oh yeah, well, because the uh, Maurice is amazing. Yes. I, lo- I love the orangutan in those movies. I would. They could just give him a spinoff and I would just watch Maurice go off and do anything. Oh look, a library. I will spend two hours reading a book on screen. Watch me. And I'd be like, please, Maurice, let me do this. <laughs> wow. Are you debating? Uh, I mean, I could watch him maybe for 10 minutes. I don't know if I could watch two hours of Maurice it reading a book. It would be enthralling. But Maurice doing other things, like reading a book, maybe a magazine, <laughs> newspaper, taking some notes. Taking some na- paper. Yes. Oh, yeah. there you go. Yeah. yeah. He, w- w- I think he tap, tap two fingered on the keyboard. He, he probably would. That's yeah. why you like him, because he would type like you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he uses feet. You know it. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, that would be cool. a book while typing with his yeah. toes. Oh, oh yeah. That would be cool. Mind blown. <laughs> How did they do the CGI for this? <laughs> they didn't. They're just that good. Because Andy Circus is amazing. <laughs> yes, We've already said this. <laughs> 
Okay, no, number like, three. Number well, three, what's well, your I mean, favorite? The first one, I, I think of the three, my first one is the favorite. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I really like the first movie because you get really into Caesar's headspace and then just watch like the growth of the monkey revolution at the end and it all ties together. The science is goofy. That whole medicine, bacterial, virus, injection thing that they do doesn't like when if you know anything about medicine, which I've had people bitch at me about that who don't know something about medicine and that doesn't make any sense. But as far as like just getting the plot moving and then giving them a plot device they could reference in the second and third movies worked really well. They need to have something yes. that destroyed the humanity. It was Hollywood science, but it wasn't the worst Hollywood science. It's not like Armageddon Star Wars. terrible. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Ar- Armageddon, I think, is worse than Star Wars as far as science is concerned. But Star Wars is pretty bad, too. I give a pass to most of it in Star Wars just because space wizards and lasers. Yeah. Laser swords. Ooh. <laughs> but no, I like. I really like the first one on, on the whole, even with terrible casting of James Franco. I, think I don't think he did that bad. James Franco is James Franco. If they had been like this stoner guy who's friends with this scientist gets this monkey, and the stoner guy was played by James Franco, isn't that the plot of uh, James Hunt and Bob Strike Back? Yeah, and I think Pineapple Express. Is that what it is? Hours. You can't you can't handle the fact that James Franco was supposedly sober and a doctor in this. Yeah, no, I don't buy okay. it. I don't like if he'd been like high on drugs and a doctor it would have suited his acting style a whole lot more that like half sleepy you know like halfway into the bag kind of performance yeah it's just james franco like you 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 can't buy james franco as a smart scientist in the same way that you can't buy mark Wahlberg as anyone other than a mushmouth bostonian it just doesn't happen well now mark Wahlberg and james franco will not do our show (laughs) oh well (laughs) Well, no, well, Mark Wahlberg will come on my show and then just to tell us off and then beat us up afterwards. That's probably, well, beat you two up. He doesn't hit women as far as I know. Hmm. Maybe he'll make an exception. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Don't, don't hit I me. I like Mark Wahlberg too, though. I don't. Other guys was amazing. Too bad. <laughs> there are some things that Mark Wahlberg is in that I can handle. There's, I mean, everyone has movies that suck. But not a lot. No. He was okay yeah. in Three Kings. Oh, I forgot he was he's in, in a lot of movies things. that suck. Yes, yeah. and he's 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 he started touring the pro America movie circuit, which is like everything he does now is I'm a gruff American who's going out after terrorists and shooting them with like Paul Greengrass as the guy that directs it. You know, huh. yeah. I can't handle his Uber at this point. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't find him believable as a hero. I don't find him believable as a human. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What is that face for, Josh? He'd be a great human slave in Planet of the Apes. <laughs> but he wasn't but one. But he wasn't one. That, he see, wasn't. that's the problem. We could, we could believe that he was a human slave yeah. as long as he had no speaking parts. Exactly. Like, you, you, you redo the original stuff, Planet of the Apes. Have the humans be, like, dumb and not able to talk and just, like, animalistic. And then you put Mark Wahlberg in that. I would buy that performance. (laughs) Fair enough. Him as an astronaut that trains monkeys? No. No, I don't buy it at all. So. (laughs) It comes down to believability with us. I can't remember the Tim Burton movie enough. I've shown all of that out. It's terrible. I really like the ending. The ending that basically was cribbed from a Kevin Smith comic book? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. (laughs) It's because it's crib from Kevin Smith. And Kevin Smith, despite all the crap that we could give him, is apparently a better writer than anyone Tim Burton knows. (laughs) I can believe that. I could believe that. Did Kevin Smith write the script to that? No. No, he and remember there was that thing in uh, Eating with Kevin Smith where he was bitching about the fact that like Tim Burton quote unquote stole his yeah we did cover it in a previous podcast you weren't here for it too late so <laughs> I was here spiritually though <laughs> mm. so yeah no I love I love the first movie I think the second one is decent yeah it was but, okay I mean was... the second and third one are basically connected movies more or mm-hmm. less as far as the plot's concerned but I don't think either of them are as strong as the first one no you don't have the John Lithgow factor uh, I mean obviously. Just just put Caesar into a remake of Third Rock from the Sun, and I would be right there for that. <laughs> John Lithgow, Caesar together, just aliens from another planet. I think that'd be fantastic. Aliens it. from the planet of the apes. Mm-hmm. Nice. I could do that. Yeah, I could see that. Okay, third movie. War is okay. But didn't this you okay. really like Bad Ape? Bad Ape is great. He's a great character. Yeah, he's a great character. Uh, as you as you co-host this show for us and get us back on track. <laughs> 
Yeah, and like like there's there's parts where like Maurice Bad Ape I think is interesting. I think the setup for the conflict of the apes and the humans is okay, but I think it ends too pat, and the humans never become anything more than just this plot device. They're not like like they're the villains, but they're not like fleshed out villains. They're just they're kind of just there and then they die. Yeah. So and that's I think anytime that you have a villain that doesn't get really solid development, like all of the X-Men movies basically. It just, it hurts the movie. Right, then who cares? Exactly. Yay, they made it to a new place. Yeah, they defeated the villain we barely understood and who was obviously a plot device just to get in the way of the human heroes and some of them die and the rest make it and huzzah. <laughs> huzzah! By the way, that is the plot of every X-Men movie, TM. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For the most part. So, yeah. Josh? Yes? And and your thoughts on the trilogy? Any of them you like? I the first, like? I mean... First one was the best. Yeah. I like the third one. The second one, I think, was just build up to the third one. It's... I feel like there was a lot of ideas that were set up for the second one that didn't really get carried out. Like, Koba, the the ape that goes bad. Mm-hmm. Not, but not bad ape, because that's a different character. Koba is set up as the villain, and he's got great development, and I love mm-hmm. Koba. But there's the human villain, quote-unquote, played by Gary Oldman. And <laughs> old man. I always like saying it. I know it's Oldman, but I always like saying Gary Oldman. Um, he is obviously set up to be the villain. He has a very villainous thing he does at the end, but there's no real development for him. He shows up in, like, three scenes and then dies. Right. Like, we, we understand that he's angry at the apes. We get that. Yeah. We but- understand that he's lost his family, but... There's not enough of him to make him substantial. Koba was a better villain. Yes. And I mean, I get that that was kind of what they wanted was that Koba was the villain. Mm-hmm. But then you didn't need the humans at all, really, except like to show up a couple times, be a plot device and disappear for the rest of the movie. They would have been fine. And then you just focus on Koba and that would have been great. Having the humans there at a certain point just detracts from the movie. Yeah, well, I think that. Well, they, I think they had to, I mean, they could have just taken that entire scene out, but, Cor, you know, Cornelia gets, Cornelia? That was, yeah, his wife. <laughs> his wife gets sick, yeah. and she only gets better because of the doctor who yeah. gives her the medicine, but they it, they could have just taken that whole piece out and not included the yeah. humans, and it would have been perfectly fine. Yeah, like, at a certain point, you don't need the humans because they've already done their job. Just let them disappear for the last two acts of the movie and focus on the characters that actually have development. Yeah. Because it's like there's uh, John Connor and Felicity. They show up a few times, and they're the most development we get out of the humans at all. But they're on the side of the apes, so they're not villains. And they don't really do anything except whatever Caesar wants them to do. So they're just, they're not real characters either. Right. Yeah. I think, like, if they could have found a way to just have the human encampment be this thing at the edge of their the ape thing, and we just see that the humans are there, but they never actually interact with them. They're just, like, background. Or maybe if they're doing their thing yeah. and they get saved by the apes, but then go their own way, that would yeah. make same sense too. Because yeah, so just, you get to see the human side of the apes. Yeah, because as soon as Koba realizes that Caesar is still, quote unquote, with the humans, your plot is already in motion. And then Koba can do whatever the hell it is that Koba wants to do. Right. And he's the villain and we're happy. Right. So, and that's the problem I have with the third movie is... Caesar basically cat recasts himself in the Koba role, which, okay, I get that, after the humans kill his wife and son. Spoiler. Um, what? It's a spoiler for a movie that's four years old and too bad. Um, but it's also the thing of Woody Harrelson is cast as the villain, but we don't see him until the halfway mark. Except for, like, in shadows and, like, the opening sequences. And then... We get to understand that he's mad at the apes for the same reason, because his son contracted the virus that went around the world that the apes had nothing to do with. I think you're, you're confusing that with zombie land. No. No. Woody, uh, no. no. I'm, just, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> he was very angry in zombie land. <laughs> and I'm very angry about zombie land, too. But... Oh, no, was it bad? Huh? Oh, all the reviews have said it was bad. Oh. But it's the thing of, he's cast as the villain, but we don't see him until the halfway mark, and then he only gets one scene to actually develop his character, and the rest of the time we're focused on just what the apes are suffering through. Right. And it's, again, it's like, we need more. He should have had a concurrent parallel plot line to Caesar for him to actually work as the villain. Basically, they overpaid Her- Woody Harrelson to be in that movie. Yeah. Yeah. They, and, they, and if they weren't going to the, take the time to develop it, they didn't need a lead villain to be the guy. The humans, again, just could have been this, like, plot device. Mm-hmm. So. 
I don't know. I don't know if it makes the third movie feel unnecessary, but it does. It doesn't help the movie at all in that regard. Well, I think the the biggest issue with this pre prequels they're not prequels. Yeah, I mean they but, they set themselves up to potentially be like a full reboot that uses this, the first of the original movies as like the fourth, but it's not really a prequel. Like I think they kind of set it up so the first one could have been a prequel if it mm-hmm. didn't su- succeed. But then everything from that point forward is basically been its own series. Yeah, but like the, what made the first original batch work though was it was more philosophical with you know humans cause their own destruction, but this one was more like the monkeys, or sorry, yeah, apes. It, it was all focused on the apes. Yeah, but then they weren't trying for political storylines like they did in the original series, like human rights and civil rights and nuclear holocaust and all mm. those things that actually mattered to people in the sixties and seventies. Yeah. So. This was more just like a sci-fi popcorn flick, which I don't, I'm not mad at it. Yeah, but no, I agree with you. I think that's the one of the few flaws I see in the new trilogy is that all the political stuff that was a key part of those movies was ditched. Yeah. So. Like, and they try to sprinkle it in every once in a while. A little bit of animal rights treatment and yeah. all that. Yeah. But it's uh, not especially the, in the first one. Yeah, but it's not as, I wouldn't say heavy handed, but it's not as key a part of the plot. Right. Like, it only motivates Koba, but. Again, Koba is great just for being Koba. And I get where he's coming from, but then I don't feel like the animal rights aspect of his character was really the part they emphasized in the second yeah, movie. Because the apes pretty much just became the humans. Yeah. Although Koba's best scene was uh, shooting the humans and playing dumb ape. Yeah, well, oh, that was yeah. fantastic. Yeah. That's the best one of the oh, scenes. Co- yeah. In the oh, yeah. Movie. Hands down. Yeah, but it's it's... If Koba had locked the humans into a lab and then decided to do experimentation on them the way that they did to him years and years ago, that would have carried that point home. I don't. I think it would have completely detracted from the story of the movie because it would have been really awkward to get him into that position, mm. but it would have carried that. Without that, the animal testing is just this plot point that's raised and then never really, like, explored afterwards. Yeah. So, ah. Yeah. I mean, it worked, but... It worked, but... That's yeah. why I like the originals a little bit better, because there was more substance. A couple of the originals. <laughs> so the, With an asterisk. Yeah, I was going to say, the originals as in number one, number three, and parts of number four. Yes. Yeah, because two and five are trash. Which one was the wedding in? Was that five? Wedding? Or... Maybe I'm thinking about something Josh else. Josh is watching movies that we're not even aware Are you watching like a romantic comedy and thinking it's starring <laughs> I, think, I think I downloaded the wrong one. Was it, was it a really hairy couple? I'm just curious. <laughs> it, it almost became very racist there for a second. I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> so I think on that note, before we start digging ourselves any further. Are you just thinking of other monkey movies that I'm, I'm there might be a wedding right, in it? Because okay. I think there's one with like Burt Reynolds or something. Any which way but loose with Clint Eastwood is not a Planet of the Apes movie, Josh. <laughs> is there a wedding in that one? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what Clint Eastwood gets up to in his personal time, okay? So, funny thing, just as a amusing anecdote, yeah. apparently Judy Greer had a Planet of the Apes themed wedding. So. Oh, so that's what you were thinking of. I think so. Okay. Judy Greer is a really weird person. <laughs> I appreciate the weirdness, though. <laughs> uh, anyway... I think we've pretty much talked this topic out at this point, and four others in the process. Wow. I, I'm not even going to try because you set the bar way, like, too high. way too high, and everything I'm going to do is I've been practicing sound, monkey sounds my entire life. It's some weird sex noises for me. <laughs> this has Ooh. been Not So Live from Asteroid G with Human Slave and Queen Bee, and we will see you next time. 